Seasons change, why not your tech? Upgrade now during the Dell Technologies Summer Sale event and save on select PCs like the XPS 16 powered by Intel Core processors. You'll be able to bring your most intensive projects to life with built-in AI, minimalistic design, immersive visuals, and cinematic audio. When you shop online at dell.com deals, you'll have access to exceptional tech and electronics, plus free shipping on everything. Amazing prices await you for a limited time only at dell.com deals. That's Dell.com slash deals. This episode is supported by FX's Clipped, the scandalous story of the 2014 Clippers owner's racist remarks captured on tape and heard around the world. The series charts the tape's impact on a dysfunctional basketball organization striving to win against their reputation as the most cursed team in the league. Starring Lawrence Fishburne, Jackie Weaver, Cleopatra Coleman, and Ed O'Neill. FX is Clipped, now streaming only on Hulu. Ronnie, isn't it amazing that we live in a world where you can get anything you need when you need it right to your door? Yeah, with DoorDash, you can get pretty much anything. This is so true. I really will lean into whatever groceries, you know, ran out of booze at a party once. You can literally DoorDash. It feels like everything in the world sometimes. Well, truly. And now I do the double dash where I get some food from one place, but then I'll still want ice cream. <laughs> yeah. and you can get that from another place or have them run to Walgreens or the 7-Eleven or whatever on the way to get your snacks. I mean, it's a dream. DoorDash, your door to more. Download the DoorDash app now to get almost anything delivered. Must be 21 plus to order alcohol. Drink responsibly. Alcohol available only in select markets. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. This is part two of a two-part recap. If you're wondering where part one was, well, go check in the feed and be sure to subscribe. She's back. She's back from the hospital, everyone, and Vicky is alive. Am I dead? Am I dead? Am I dead? I saw Haley Joel Osment. I said, hey, hey, little boy. You want to whoop it up? You want to whoop it up, little boy? Get over here, little boy. Hi, did everyone have a good interval? What'd you guys do? <laughs> Drank at a girl. We binged. I, and by we, I mean me. You guys keep giving us chocolate. What the fuck? Have you heard me? Have you heard me That's talking about Ozempic? Listen, I'm back there snorting weight loss drugs, and I'm like, but they brought me chocolate. Ugh. We have so much chocolate. It's amazing. I'm a huge chocoholic, and I am just going to be one giant Cadbury Ben. And by the end of this... Yeah. I love it. Yeah, someone was telling us the other day, you know, London's so great, Ronnie. You can, uh, I mean, I guess I talk about myself too much on this show, but they were like, you're going to love this, Ronnie, because you can call drug dealers here, and they actually give you a really fancy menu of all the wonderful top-shelf drugs they have. And I was like, is there something, like, is there a restaurant open? (laughs) It's like, nope, can't get a restaurant. What the fuck kind of town is that? You can't go to a restaurant at 11. You can only get Coke. What are you supposed to do? <laughs> yeah, no, Women in Rome, am I right? This has really been a dream. This, this, entire, this entire trip has been, like, really... We've been wanting to do a European thing for years and years and years. Yeah. And it's been, it's been wonderful. And also, like, honestly, like, what a thrill to go to London and to see a 22-year-old girl dancing to Meadow on the Dance Floor on a table. I was like, okay, relax, Gemma. Meadow on the Dance Floor. There are a lot of Gemmas. We do meet a lot of Gemmas here. I was like, it's exactly as I would hope, you know? Because I learn everything. Meadow on the Dance Floor. Meadow on the Dance Floor. They you no got a blah, blah, blah. Set, uh, go turn that shit Meadow right on the round. Dance Floor. Turn this shit right round. Yeah, like I I said on an earlier show, like I've really taken, and this may not be the best source, but I've really learned so much of British culture from Love Island UK. Which is coming back on Monday, right? And so like, that's really what, so like seeing that girl dancing on the table in London at that bar, I was like, I feel like I'm in Love Island right now. 
Because I imagine Georgia Steele, that's what she does, right? You know, she's like, Tobes, I'm loyal, babe. It's murder on the dance floor. Oh. Quite fit. You're quite, quite fit. fit, aren't ya? It's quite fit. It's my type on paper. Quite frankly. I know, it's early days. There are some quite fit people here. Yeah. And also, we're staying, we stayed at this really trendy place in London, and um, <laughs> I'm not quite fit. And I was sitting there doing my notes, and it's like a trendy little co coffee shop or whatever. And there was this guy, and he went outside smoking. I was on the other side of the window. Did I already tell this? Sorry if I did. But he's sitting on the other side of the window. And, you know, I'm like this big bald guy. And I'm sitting there with my little thing like, I'm taking housewives notes. And I could see him. He's like smoking. And then he pulled out his phone. And then he went right up against the window to me. And he's like, he took a picture. And then my, I'm in the picture, obviously. And I'm like this. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm gonna look like, who the fuck are you taking a picture of? And then he's like, <laughs> like, what the, f what did that little fucker just write, you know? <laughs> My only dream is for someone to be like, look at you, you're quite fat, aren't you? <laughs> and I've got some guy like, look, look at this fucking idiot behind me. It's Uncle Fester Day in London. Yeah. <laughs> like, literally the most thrilling thing for me, what I've always wanted, is just to be completely dismissed by a British person. <laughs> And like, that's what happened at our hotel. We checked in and I was like, oh, are there any places for lunch? He's like, oh, there might be some place around here. And I said, oh, it's okay, I can Yelp. And he goes, oh, you still use Yelp? <laughs> I was like, geez, sorry, and thank you. He really did too. And he then really he turned it. into like, once a queen knows he can be evil around you, he never stopped tittering after that. Cause when we walked in there, he's like, hello. <laughs> hello. He wouldn't look at us. And then when he got a Yelp joke in, he's like, <laughs> Anyone still use that? <laughs> and then every time I came down to that lobby, he'd be like, hello. <laughs> Look at him Bitch. yelping. Isn't that adorable in America? Oh, you've, <laughs> given them, you've given them somebody to bully, and they're all happy. The it's lady at today's hotel is the same way. Ben, and usually this is me. I'm sorry I have to get That's on That's okay. Because usually I'm the one who's like, hi, I'm Ronnie. I'm from America. What do you like? Do you have TVs here? Like, I'm an idiot, you know? <laughs> but I've just learned to, like, play it cool and keep my mouth shut, because that's the only way I get respect. So we go to the hotel today, and Ben's like, hi. And she goes, how many rooms? He goes, we have two, but we're actually different names. So you can do whoever you want. Like, maybe you should check under Rondel, or maybe you should check under Benjamin. Or, no, you should check under <laughs> Rondel first. No, check under Benjamin first. You were like me in there. And the lady was like, <sighs> Which is it? Which is it? Is it Rondel? Is it Benjamin? Who are you? All right, I found Rondel. You want me to do that one? He's like, oh, I'm Benjamin. She goes, oh, all right. I'm Benjamin then. She hates She had us. no patience. She had no patience whatsoever. Uh, it was great. I loved it. I love being very American. Oh, God. So all right. the point is we're having the God. time of our lives. You did it. Goal accomplished. We nailed it. <laughs> Speaking of hotels, Vicky has just come back to her hotel in Iceland. So that's what we all do when we get back from hospital. Shots. <laughs> lots and lots of shots. So Tamara's like, we, we, we got you the same thing. We got Jesus when he came back to life. A casserole, bitch! <laughs> so then she, they give her this casserole, which looks weird because it's in a bowl. I don't know. Do you, guys, actually, do you guys have casseroles here? Or they no. call it something else? No. Everyone's like, no. Casserole. Y'all just... Y'all just... Y'all... The crowd's it? turning on us. The crowd's turning on us. Gotta go. Gotta go. God damn, you guys did do some shots at the, <laughs> at the interval. I know, something happened at the interval. Oh, no kidding, what happened uh, over there? If they talk about casseroles here in this English countryside. Jeez. Uh, uh, but yeah, you guys are just going to say yes to anything an American says and then just hand us like a bowl of noodles. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, like, okay, sit down. We got you a casserole. It was in a casserole pan, but they tried to make it nice for you because that's another thing, make it nice. Oh, it's not sweet. Big, big, I still hate you. I hope you die. <laughs> okay. Glad you're alive so I can continue hating you. <laughs> the flame burns strong. So Vicky's like, I just, you know, I didn't think I'd ever see my daughters again, or my daughter again, or my grandchildren, and I, like, I thought I was going to die, and, like, I mean, what's a bitch guy do around here to get a drink? Come on now. I have low blood sugar, too. I could have died, too. I have low blood sugar. <laughs> so they now decide they're going to go to Shannon's hotel room at, like, 1.45 in the morning. Of course, it looks like it's 3 in the afternoon because it's fucking ice in the summer. And now it's, like, the producers are in there. Like, it's not camera crew anymore, we can see, because it's basically, like, you know, it's like a cell phone footage. And they're all drunk, and they're all having fun, and it looks like, oh, this cast is finally getting along, you know? 
So Megan's like, after Vicky came back from the hospital, we're all having fun in the lobby, and we went back to Shannon's room. So it's like, images are parting. Images are parting. <laughs> and then we see uh, Peggy with a bottle of water and a wine opener. And she's like, <laughs> it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Disgusting. <laughs> Peggy's giving her bot- bottle of water CPR. She's like, okay, come on. <laughs> Come on, I can do this miracle of Peggy. And of course, Vicky's like, whoop it up! <laughs> Doing the worm. You know, she's found some random bus boy she's sitting on top of, you know. <laughs> well, I do find it interesting that being af- <laughs> after being in the hospital, <laughs> that Vicky would Vicky. go straight to my room and have a glass of champagne. Right <laughs> to my room. Right to my room. <laughs> I mean, I, I did order some cod, I did do that. <laughs> There are a lot of things coming to that room. Champagne, cod, Peggy. For some reason, they just kept delivering pudding. Nobody could really understand that one. Yeah. They have cod pudding in Iceland. It's the strangest thing. It was just rack, it was just more cod. Just... Who starts shooting champagne the second they get home from hospital? You, drunkie. <laughs> I know. Have flash, you... flash, flash forward to <laughs> two weeks ago, Santa like careening into a house. I, no. <laughs> have you seen the ring cameras in Newport Beach these days? It's like freaking watching the Batmobile. What? I was just walking my dog. <laughs> I was, I was walking my. Okay, so I was teaching Archie how to drive. Yeah. And you know he was a novice. You know and things happen. But I was totally sober. Sorry, I'm a good mother. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm accused of drunk driving. Why isn't that house accused of sober standing? Standing in the street. <laughs> So Vicky and Tamara are sort of sitting near each other, and they're drunk, so they're kind of like, they're, they've been sort of, they have not been getting along this season, so now they're starting to rehash things, or they're starting to connect a little bit, and Tamara's doing that thing where she stares really hard and moves her lips like a little goldfish. <laughs> Tamara, Tamara, I love you. My favorite is when she shakes her head like this at the same time. She's like... <laughs> She's like trying to trying to catch a straw in her drink. You know, you know when that happens and you pick up your drink, your straw's there, and your straw's like whoop, and you're like <laughs> And you're trying to have a civilized conversation, but at the same time you're like a salmon right there, like <laughs> Oh my god, look at Vicky! Guys, everybody look at Vicky! Vicky! Oh, Vicky! Vicky has such special feelings for Tamara. Right, Vicky? Right! I did. She I does. Did. I did. You should talk to. Hey, Tamara, you should talk to Vicky. She feels so special about you, right? You guys should do it. Talk about but it. But you have to be willing to listen to my side of why I faked a cancer story, because I have a side. There's two sides to every conflict, you know? And every story, someone's gonna have to sacrifice to really forgive, like Jesus, okay? Because <laughs> I've hurt too. Fake cancer also hurt me, who faked it. <laughs> Understand? Tamara's like, you know what, Patch? Seeing Vicky get taken off to the hospital with a towel on her face kind of puts things in perspective. Like, what if that was the last towel in the resort? What would we do? Life and towels can go away so quickly. And now I feel like it makes me realize there are so many other people's lives I can destroy, not just Vicky's. <laughs> yeah. And now, uh, that's just really painful. And so I feel... Back, we can finally have a conversation. Thank it, let's do it. She goes, oh, by the way, Tara, I'm not jealous of happy marriages, by the way, okay? Because that's what you said. You said, and that hurt me. It hurt like cancer. I'm sorry, too soon? <laughs> <All right. laughs> but uh, listen, you know, my daughter's marriage is happy, and I'm not jealous of that stupid slut. I mean, what? Oh, God, I'm so sorry. My daughter's marriage is everything I've always wanted. Yeah, yeah. Haven't you always wanted a husband who wouldn't let you put your shoes up on the sofa? I've just always wanted a man who would yell at another person's mother for me. <laughs> That's all I wanted. She just wants the best for you, Tamara. Kelly, please, Kelly. Let us talk, Kelly. She just wants the best. God. So, so, Vicky, Vicky, could you imagine if I was spreading rumors about Steve? It would be hurtful, Vicky. It would be hurtful. I mean, it's not and the then, first time he's the sexiest man in Orange County. It's a lot of rumors about Steve. And if you forgot what she's talking about. Last year, Vicky spread this vicious rumor <laughs> that my husband is gay. <laughs> I forgot about that. 
Was that the same instance where like Vicky had Gretchen come over with two like two random gays? Like we hear that Eddie gets blown in the gym. Yes, was bitch. Was that the bunko the party Ricky? where they were like dressed as the '80s bunko party or whatever? <laughs> that was so funny. So, um, yeah, that gay. Oh my god, and they've banned that gay. He's not allowed back. Remember his weird faux faux hawk wig? He was banned out of gayness. Actually, like we said, you know what? You have to become straight now. We're not allowed day. to show up on camera. It's like all the straight way. guys doing the Harry Styles, like dressing in women's blouses and stuff. It's like reversed, you know? <laughs> We're like walking around like, I oh, anybody go domestic clean up the batty man's here. Uh, so She plot- wasn't spreading rumors, okay, Tamara? She wasn't spreading rumors. She just was telling people that her husband is gay. <laughs> so we get the flashback scene to the reunion, and Andy's like, so... <laughs> Tamara, <laughs> you said that Eddie's gay. Please tell me that's true. Picture it didn't happen. Ha, ha, ha. And Vicky's like, I never said that. I never said that. I mean, I like Eddie. I like Eddie. Which is like, excuse me. It's not an insult to call someone gay. It's a compliment. <laughs> so Tamara's like, I would never do that to a friend. I'm gay. I'm gay. I'm Christian. <laughs> She wasn't spreading rumors, Tamara. Um, and uh, she's like, you know what, Tamara? Tamara, I've been telling you for six months. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And Kelly's like, you don't want to hear it, do you? You don't want to hear it. She's like, Kelly, Kelly, you don't even tell it. You better zip it. You better Ooh. zip it right now, Kelly. You better zip it right now, Kelly. <laughs> Kelly, this is between A and B, and see your way out of it. See where to- Kelly's like, you don't understand. You don't understand. She wasn't spreading rumors. <laughs> so meanwhile, she was I'm- just saying it as a compliment, like he's gay, you know. <laughs> She was just saying that he likes to get it up the butt or likes to put his up someone else's butt. That's all. That's it. She's uh, painting a picture. <sighs> so just, meanwhile, there's like this other sofa where it's like Shannon, Megan, and Peggy are all just sitting there watching. And Shannon's like, huh, yeah. okay, well, I guess if Victoria Gunvalson wants to talk to Tamara Barney, that's her business, but I don't understand why this is happening whatsoever. Um, no, I'm, I'm, it's, it's a... I'm totally happy for their friendship. I'm very, I'm very, I'm happy. I'm but this happy was that, that this was that five minutes in time where Kelly was on Team Vicky, so now she's like fighting all of Vicky's battles. She's like, "Go, yeah. Tamara, you better, you need to talk to Vicky, right, Vicky? Talk to her." So no. Shannon's like, "Oh well, if she's gonna be on her side, then I could go on Tamara's side too. Does everybody want me on Tamara's side?" They're like, "No, no, please, please. Well, I'll do it. I'm gonna do it." And we see a flashback because this happened earlier this season when there was a fight. Do you remember this when when Shannon was wearing that ridiculous hat? that looked like a chip and dip and she, <laughs> and she was like Kelly I will stand here and support Tamra <laughs> and I will also have a chip for my hat <laughs> so Kelly's like she doesn't want to hear the truth she loves Eddie <laughs> don't tell her she's gay she doesn't need to know <laughs> I mean what the hell happened to closets anymore Tamra, Tamra, I've heard bad things you said about me. You said I wasn't sexually attracted to the hottest man in Orange County, Steve Lodge. That was incredibly hurtful to me. Of course I am. Of uh, course yeah. I'm deeply attracted to, attracted to Steve Lodge like anyone would be. Yeah, yeah, but guess what, Vicky? Guess what? Guess what? What? What, Tamra? What? Guess what? what? what Tamra? Tamra? I've had people, I've had people come to me about Steve Lodge, Vicky. I mean, I've had people come to me about Steve Lodge, Vicky. I really don't care. I really don't, so, don't care, Tamra. But I, I care. But you know what? I'm, I'm not going to say anything because it's not I'm dead. I'm dead. I've actually died. I died again. Oh, my God. I died. I died. I'm dead. You're Do you think I'll follow you to heaven and argue with you there, bitch? You think... Tamara, don't do this to me. Don't do this to but me. But you Why did it you to me, okay? You did it to me. So what if I told everybody that Steve Lodge was gay? Do you know how many gay people would jump off mountains? <laughs> he has too many doctors to be gay. Okay, I know he's as straight as they come. <laughs> but it's right, you're dead. It's right, you're dead to me. But you did the same thing when you told everybody that Brooks was lying about having cancer. <laughs> Tamara- Maybe one side about having cancer. And then we get a montage of Tamara losing her mind to Brooks. Stop that me when you need Brooks! <laughs> Otherwise known as the fur coat fight. That was my favorite season finale fight where Vicky's wearing that big fur. And Brooks is just like, 
Well, roses are red and violets are blue. I ain't got rent money, but you do. <laughs> and then they get in a fight. It's like, I just want you to support me. Brent, if I have a friend of you, I will fuck you up. I will fuck you up, bitch. Commercials. Here comes one right now. You know, gyms can be real sneaky. You know, they trick you into these forever memberships. And the next thing you know, you're spending dollar after dollar after dollar going back and back and back to that gym. And it's not always working. Weight loss industry is a cash machine and it runs on our desperation. Crazy diets and weight loss products are temporary and you gain it all back. But not when you visit Sono Bello, okay? Smile, it's going to go away permanently in just one visit. Ask about their modern techniques to eliminate sagging and loose skin. Sonobello gives you your curves back permanently. No more feeling embarrassed, shy, and uncomfortable about your body. No more hiding in baggy clothes. Give yourself the gift of a full body reset. You deserve to be happy. Schedule your free consultation. Learn all about micro laser fat removal. Sonobello is running a great special right now. Visit sonobello.com slash WWC. Sono, B-E-L-L-O dot com slash WWC. The CDC estimates that approximately 96 million American adults, more than one in three, have prediabetes. Of those with prediabetes, more than 80% don't even know they have it. Why does this matter? If you have prediabetes, sugar begins to build up in the bloodstream rather than fuel the cells. This is when insulin resistance occurs, which is believed to be the number one cause of prediabetes. A healthy weight allows insulin to work more efficiently and can help to keep blood sugars within a normal range. Cygnos can help you short-circuit the cycle by using data directly from your body to design a weight loss plan that's unique to your lifestyle. With Cygnos, you can literally see which foods cause your blood sugar to spike above reasonable levels and get real-time alerts to do a bit of exercise to bring them back down. On average, people make about 227 food choices a day. Learn the difference between stressed eating and physical hunger. Better manage your energy throughout the day and sleep better at night. Listen, I've got some health stuff going on here. I've been working. I've been on my weight loss journey for about a year now, and I need to track this stuff, so it's great to have something so simple to use. Cygnos removes the guesswork of weight loss and provides you with the tools and knowledge needed to develop healthier habits. It combines your glucose data from the CGM or a continuous glucose monitor with an AI-driven app to deliver real-time glucose insights for optimal health and weight management. Right now, Cygnos has an offer exclusively for our listeners. Go to Cygnos.com, that's S-I-G-N-O-S.com, and get up to 20% off select plans by using code CRAPPENS today. That's Cygnos.com, and use code CRAPPENS to get up to 20% off select plans for you today. Hey, Dave. Yeah, Randy. Since we founded Bombas, we've always said our socks, underwear, and T-shirts are super soft. Any new ideas? Maybe sublimely soft. Or disgustingly cozy. Wait, what? I got it. Bombas. Absurdly comfortable essentials for yourself. And for those facing homelessness. Because one purchased equals one donated. Wow, did we just write an ad? Yes. Bombas, big comfort for everyone. Go to bombas.com slash Wondery and use code Wondery for 20% off your first purchase. <laughs> so then uh, Vicky's like, you know, but you did try to warn me about Brooks, but I have to find out for myself. I couldn't really understand the truth until I'd bottomed those new teeth. <laughs> when he lied through those new teeth, I knew. <laughs> I, I tried taking it back, but I'd lost the receipt. <laughs> I understand but you turned against the people that were trying to protect you. Bitch! <laughs> I had to find out on my own. And she didn't know. She didn't know, but I, had to, I had to know on my own. She didn't know. <laughs> Do you know how hard it hurt me? <laughs> when I was telling you, your scuzzy toothless boyfriend was a piece of shit. I hoped he died and you got mad at me about it. <laughs> and remember when I hired that psychic and I said, hey, gay person friend, that I... I like because you're not my husband, who I would hate if he was actually gay. Because normally I hate gay people, but you're psychic right now because I need you to be. <laughs> Brooks faking have cancer, right? <laughs> and then that gay psychic said very gaily, yeah. <laughs> and then you got mad at me, why? It hurt my feelings, Vicks. <laughs> you just hurt at a mid bitch. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so Vicky's like, I'm sorry. I mean, I, like, I'm sorry that Tamara feels like I chose Bricks over her. I mean, I didn't feel like she chose Eddie over me. I mean, like, I was supporting him on that gay pride pl- float. <laughs> I just bet it, it's a compliment. <clears throat> so Tamara's like, oh my God, I love you. Please don't ever choose me again. I will never choose something over you again unless it has a penis. I promise you that. I promise you that. I miss you. I miss you. Get a job. Get a job. So then Shannon says, This is a nice moment. They finally reconciled. Shannon's like, Huh. Well, huh. Huh. Megan, I can tell you this much, Megan King Edmonds. Vicky has never been a real friend to Tamara, ever. <laughs> I promise you I'm in children's lives. I have no desire to hurt you. I promise you, hon, Brooks is life, which will probably end soon when I run him over with my motorcycle. <laughs> I, I will never try to hurt you today again. I'm the real friend here, I just want to say. I just want to see that up to the side here. I just want... But I'll be composed. I'll be calm. I'll be fucking lying. Thirty to forty negative Just thoughts. Thirty to forty Shannon, negative Shannon, thoughts. Shannon, now's not the time, Shannon. Now's not the time, Shannon. Oh. I mean, I get where Shannon's coming from. It's got to be hard watching your best friend getting along with this person who completely shit on you. I mean, she's not even a no tool. <laughs> And then Vicky and Tamara are doing this thing where they're holding each other's heads. <laughs> I've, known you. I've known you for over a decade. Over a decade of my life. I remember you were 56 and I was 23 when we first met. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I remember I was whooping it up back then. Now I'm, I'm still whooping it up, bitch. I'm still fucking here whooping it decades later. Decades later. Oh, I, you inspired me to sell whoop it up insurance. It's not a uh, bitch. By the way, Ronnie Karam has the softest face I've ever felt in my life. <laughs> Those chemical peels work. Sorry I got my finger grease all over your perfect face. Oh, it's okay. I'll, I'll go home and burn it off. <laughs> all right. Um, so uh, she's like, uh, don't hurt me. Please don't ever hurt me again. And Shannon's like, Dickie, you do it every week. You hurt her. <laughs> Poor Tamara Barney Judge hurt by Vicky. <laughs> I, I, I can't, I can't, I can't do this. I can't do this. Okay, you know what? You know what? I gotta go. I gotta call Steve Lodge. I gotta call Steve Lodge. He's worried about me. He is so worried about me. Hold on, let me look at my cell phone to see him call. He didn't call because he's so worried. He's so worried right now. So weird. I keep sending him texts to say, "Are you worried about me?" And they come back green. I'm not really sure what that means. <laughs> So uh, uh, we've all been there. Everybody was like, "Oh." <laughs> so meanwhile, Peggy is now holding Tamara because Tamara's crying, and Peggy's like, "What did the doctor say? <laughs> did he say doctor like things to you? Tell me everything." <laughs> Vicky, I'm not going into this conversation after you went to the hospital. I gotta go. I gotta call Steve. <laughs> He's so worried. I feel it. I feel his worry from here. And Tamara's still crying. And Shannon's like, that woman won't admit anything. She never takes responsibility for anything she does. That house was just walking in the middle of the road. <laughs> <laughs> Tamara, I'd love to hear this story, but I think I saw you crying a lot tonight on behalf of Victoria Gumbelson. Just, no, I know I did cry. But, you know, by the way, I feel like we didn't really fully move on. I mean, even though I like sobbed into her arms and said, we've totally moved on. I don't think we moved on. I thought we were like close to moving on. If I had to give that a review, I'd say that was like a 100% move on. I've stood after that bitch. (laughs) Fucking Tamara, man. (laughs) You can't have a plot arc with Tamara. She's like, yeah, baby, we are like sisters. Okay, bye, Vicks. Have a good sleep. I'm going to ruin that bitch's life. It just goes right back to it, you know? (laughs) So now it's the morning. It's the morning in Iceland. They've gone through this. Um, Lydia is reading the Bible with a cup of coffee. I mean, girl, like, I get it. I'm not saying you don't really love Jesus. I'm not criticizing Jesus. Ain't nobody reads the Bible on the, t- on the Bravo. Put it down, okay? Yeah. Get a fucking, uh, fucking L, you know? <laughs> 
So they're all sort of like waking up and everything. And apparently, after all this stuff happened, there was still more chaos. So Kelly is telling some of the women, she's like, who's insane last night? Peggy tells me what to do and I say she's my mom. <laughs> so then we get a flash to the back from the night before and Kelly's like, you are not my mom. And Peggy's like, I don't care what you think. So you know what? Callate. And that means shut the fuck up. And Kelly, <laughs> Kelly's like, yeah, I mean, shut the fuck up in Spanish. That's what you need to do. And Peggy's like, if that makes you feel good, keep doing it. If what makes me feel good, what did you say? <laughs> what did you say? Why are you cursing at me? You curse at me, you bitch! <laughs> Kelly's like, I will trump you day after day after day. And Peggy goes, what is Trump? <laughs> As if Peggy doesn't know. And then Kelly... Girl! If anybody in this cast knows it's Peggy with her red cap hiding ass. Get the fuck out of here. And Kelly's like, I hate that girl! Everything I say, she says, what? Like Jolie does. <laughs> so in then, everyone's defense, you are Kelly. So then, uh, is this killing your guys' ears? How are you still sitting through this? I know. I have a headache. <laughs> I've been screaming like Kelly Dodd for four hours in a row. So Kelly's like, and then we see another flashback. Kelly's talking to Peggy and well, yelling at Peggy. And she's like, you know what? I'm not going to be disrespectful to you. But like, when you say you're going to have your husband call my husband, it's like, oh, wow. I'm going to have my daddy call your daddy. How about that? And Peggy's like, what, what did, did you, you say, say about, about my dad? dad? <laughs> I said my dad can beat up your dad. How dare you? But what, we, what Kelly doesn't realize is that something that Peggy had said earlier in the episode is that her dad had died in sort of like through dementia and it was sad and terrible. So this becomes, I believe this became then this stupid little moment here became the launch pad for a new fight about how dare you disrespect my father's memory like this. So oh, you know, for I gotta love the housewives. Sake. Yeah. So then uh, Tamara walks to Kelly's room with wooden sandals and a charcoal face mask. <laughs> It actually was, yeah. It was hard. I'm sure this is going to end great. I braced myself because we don't rewatch these until we take the notes, you know? So we're like, oh, we'll just do that episode. Remember that from a few years ago? <laughs> so, <laughs> so Tamara's like, oh my God, I just remembered that last night I peed myself and it just went everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah, remember? It was so funny. Because then... <laughs> <laughs> then... Then Meg was like, did you pee? And I was like, yeah. And he just cuts to Megan and she goes, did you pee? That is so gross. <laughs> <laughs> Megan's contributions to this episode are really wonderful. The hospital, what are they going to do at the hospital? <laughs> did you pee? Is and this Lydia's a door? <laughs> Lydia's like, whoa, in this room? You want to pee in here? In this... Are you still wearing those pants, those same pants that you went pee in? That is crazy. Why would you do that? <laughs> yeah, Tamara has had eight hours to change out of her pee pants, and she still hasn't. Sad, does she seem mad at me? Kelly's like, yes! <laughs> Um, she's talking, uh, Kelly's like, because uh, she had a moment with Vicky last night, so now Shannon's mad. Uh, and then we see the flashback to them holding heads and crying on each other. And Tamara's like, yeah, she's seen how upset and affected both of our families were. And she's like, don't give her another chance. But, you know, since I've been on the trip, being around you, I just gotta move on. You know, like, I've told Shannon, if you ever talk to that bitch again, you are dead to me. <laughs> Another day, another dollar, you know what I mean? <laughs> I still care about Vicky because I'm a human being and I have compassion. That's why they call me Tamara Compassion Judge. <laughs> so then Vicky's like, <laughs> yeah, last night was a breakthrough we needed, you know? We put our differences aside. Now we can whoop it up. We can just have fun. That's what life is about, having fun. You know, we're going to be playing pit the tail of the cancer later. And we're just totally over it. We're totally over it. <laughs> You know, life is all about having fun, which is why I'm now going to knock on Peggy's door, the most fun person on our cast. Peggy, Peggy, what a whoop it up. Peggy, Peggy, hey Peggy, what a whoop it up. Peggy, 
Hello, you have reached the door of Peggy Sulahan. I am not here right now because Dico says so. So please leave a message after the thump. I don't think that was a real voicemail. Peggy, is that really you? Is that really a phone? Did I dial the phone right now? Hey, why is this coming back green? This is coming back. <laughs> These doors are crazy in Iceland. <laughs> So, so Megan's breastfeeding her baby, and Bridget uh, is there. Her, I don't, I don't know why I'm saying that. Who cares? That was fun. Guys, was fun guys, scene. guys. Bridget's there. Bridget's there. Bridget. There was breastfeeding. Okay, for those of you who are like, hey, where's the breastfeeding in this episode? What are it was we gonna there. get to Bridget? It was there. What are we gonna get to Bridget? <laughs> it's been that kind of a week on Bravo. Every single show is like, oh yeah, but I breastfeed, Lala, and then to the Valley. Do you know how many children my breastfeeding right now? And then to this show. I am Bridget creating lives. I'm creating lives. So I don't have to I deal with life. this. Creating life. I'm going to bake a baby right now. Uh, don't have to answer a door because I'm baking a baby. So, <laughs> all I want to do is bake a baby. So, we go to the van and uh, everybody's worried about Peggy. And by worried, I mean they're like laughing and having a great time. Being like, thank God that bitch isn't here. Right? <laughs> So Kelly's like, yeah, well, fuck her because my trigger is people trying to control me. <gasps> that was my grandma. It was my mom. It was Michael. Is that guy? Oh, ma'am, could you please sit down? Fuck you, bus driver, you piece of shit. You want a fucking piece of me? You're drunk. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, they they leave. Their, they start walking around this town. They, there's some sort of creepy thing. It looked like the like a witch looked statue. like Hoggle from Labyrinth or something. Yeah. It was like and, a witch statue. It's like. Ugh. And Tamara's like, ha, 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 it's Shannon. <laughs> ha, ha, I'm going to pretend like I'm totally on bother. So that way I don't lose Tamara to Vicky. I'm going to not mind that this person looks hideous and has chin hairs. I'm so happy. <laughs> hey, 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 Tamara. Hey, Tamara. Yes? Hey, Tamara. Yes. What's the capital of Thailand? Um, I believe it's, um, let me think now. It's a major Asian city. Um, it's somewhere. It's Bangkok! Not... Ah! That's hilarious. You just punk, punched me hilarious. in the, the non-cock. Hilarious. So they go shopping and they find some big fur things. And Shannon's like, well, we're on a trip. And um, I guess uh, they're just having fun making fun of me. And I'm having fun and laughing because we're on the trip. And then I go to the room and I have a pit in my stomach. Because I remember what she's doing still. Vicky, insidious. It's difficult, but it's good. We're having a good time. Oh, thank you so much for asking, Lydia. Lydia's like, are you sure? Hey, and hey, hey, Lydia. What's the, uh, what, uh, what is the capital of France? Paris! Oh. What? That, I guess that, I guess it doesn't make sense when you say it that way. Oh, I get it, Bangkok. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll okay, I get it. <laughs> So then back at Hotel Renga, they're like, Oh, wait, hey, where's that quiet lady who's always trying to get everybody to buy a car from her husband? Where's she at? Let's go see her. Hey, stupid face. Stupid step, Peggy. Nobody likes you. Open your door. We'll tell you to your face. Hey, Peggy, what's a city in Canada? Toronto! I just, I, I can't seem to be able to figure out this joke. Hello, you have reached the room of Peggy Sulahan, 100th housewife of Orange County. I'm not home right now. Please leave your room. Hey, come on. Did somebody call you? Uh, my husband is here. Hand me the phone. Okay. Hey, it's Dico. You reached the voicemail of Dico behind the door. Um, Do you uh, drive? Do you drive? <laughs> it's Dico. Ah! Beep. Um, hi, Peggy. This is Shannon Bador. I'm leaving you a message. Um... I was just wondering if you've um, heard anything from David. I've been trying to call my husband, and I just keep getting set to his door voicemail, and I'm getting concerned. <laughs> Please call me back. Thank you. Beep. Hello, you have reached the voicemail of 100th Housewife of Orange County, Peggy Sulan. Um... I'm not here to record the rest of this message, so I've brought someone from my neighborhood, David, to record for you. Yes, dear. <laughs> oh, 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 so David, um, I'm so glad that you're, that you're here. 
Um, I was wondering, um, have um, have you checked in on our daughters recently? Are they just running wild like little tramps in Orange County right now? Did you like your Peloton, dear? <laughs> okay, Eating I, those fucking chips, David. And her I, face. I'm trying to eat quinoa, David. I just I just realized it was a pre-recorded message, and I was talking to it like it was a person. Okay. Okay, um, Peggy, Peggy, I know that you're in there, um, mostly because I can still smell your perfume, because I think you keep spraying it at the door, but, um, it smells really good, and, um, this door's really pretty, if you haven't seen it, it's really, really good looking, so, just let us know you're okay, okay, because I'm really tired of praying for you, I've kind of run out of revelations, so, i just... <laughs> I'm here, but I need some space, please, give me a few minutes. But, you've had all day. <laughs> Jesus took less time to move a boulder and fly to heaven. So, please, please, I need time to myself. These ladies would rather have dinner than go to a hospital. How can I be around trash like that? Disgusting. And that, strangely enough, was the end of the episode. <laughs> That brings us to the end of Real Outsides of Orange County. Will Peggy ever open her door? Who knows? Thank you so much for having us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Birmingham. Thank You've you been guys, wonderful. For coming out. Thank you for coming. Thank you. You're Good a- night, everyone. Everybody. Bye. Thank you. Welcome to the club. Everybody say my name. Welcome to the mall and a same everywhere I go. People holler every day. I raise my hands up and holler back. Hey. Welcome to Blow Me Back. Hey, Bat. Hey, Bat. Watch What Crappens would like to thank its premium sponsors. Ain't no thing like Allison King. Ashley Savoni, she don't take no baloney. Stroll in the park with Caitlin Clark. She's not just a Sheila, she's a Daniela. Itchels. Aaron McNicholas, she don't miss no trickleus. She's never scary, it's the Green Fairy. Jamie, she has no last namey. Hava Nagila Weber. Know your worth with Jason Kurth. Sip some scotch with Jessica Trotch. She's always supplying, it's Kelly Ryan. Kristen the Piston Anderson. Let's give a kisserino to Lisa Lino. We want to hang with Liz Lang. Megan Berg, you can't have a burger without the Berg. The Bay Area Betches. Betches. And our super premium sponsors. Somebody get us 10 cc's of Betsy MD. We're taking the gold with Brenda Silva. Let's get real with Caitlin O'Neill. Don't get salty with Christine Pepper. Can't have a meal without the Emily Sides. We forever love Ava. Nobody holds a candle to Jamie Kendall. We got our wish, it's Jen Plish. She's not harsh, she's Jill Hirsch. She's a little bit loony. Junie, my favorite Murdo, Karen McMurdo. We love him madly, it's Kyle Pod Shadley. Let's go on a bender with Lauren Fender, the incredible edible Matthew sisters. Give him hell, Miss Noel. Ring that bell for Rachel. She's the queen bee, it's Sarah Lemke. Shannon, out of a cannon, Anthony. Let's take off with Tamla Plain. She ain't no shrinking Violet Kuchar. We love you guys. Hey, Prime members, you can listen to Watch or Crappens ad-free on Amazon Music. Download the Amazon Music app today. Or you can listen ad-free with Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts. Before you go, tell us about yourself by completing a short survey at wondery.com survey. It was the biggest scandal in pop music. The stars of Milli Vanilli, the Grammy-winning multi-platinum R&B phenomenon, were exposed as frauds. But none of this was their idea. So whose idea was it? Enter German music producer Frank Farian. He saw the success of acts like Michael Jackson and Prince, and he wanted in, no matter the cost. So he devised the perfect pop heist. Two once-in-a-lifetime talents who were charismatic, full of sex appeal, and phenomenal dancers. The only problem? They couldn't sing. But Frank knew just how to fix that. Wondery's new podcast, Blame It on the Fame, dives into one of pop music's greatest controversies and takes a never-before-heard look at the exploitation of two young Black artists. Millie Vanilli set the world on fire, but when the truth came out, Rob and Fab were the only ones who got burned. Looking back now, it's hard not to wonder, why did everyone blame them and not the man pulling the strings? 
Follow Blame It on the Fame, Millie Vanilli, on the Wondery app or wherever you get your podcasts. You can binge all episodes of Blame It on the Fame early and ad-free right now by joining Wondery Plus. I'm Elena, an autopsy technician. And I'm Ash, a hairstylist. And we just love swapping stories about all of the morbid things that fascinate us. And if you do too, join us on our podcast, Morbid. It's a safe space to let your weirdo flag fly. On Morbid, we cover dark historical events, sinister science, unnerving paranormal events, and sordid high society murders. We also dive deep into the most notorious crimes in history. Our podcast is grounded in rigorous and painstaking research. We're also not afraid to read a p- yeah. <laughs> We keep it weird because a dash of snark is necessary to get through grotesque true tales of demented minds. So follow Morbid on the Wondery app or wherever you get your podcasts. You can listen to Morbid early and ad-free right now by joining Wondery Plus.